give that a real quick minute. Okay. All right, let me see here. Let's go down here. How's my audio doing now? I guess today has just been a harassing day with technical difficulties. I'm not sure what's going on. Is it better now, Andy? Okay. Folks, if you just give me a heads up on making sure the audio is, is good to go, I'd appreciate it right now. Okay, everybody saying good. Everybody saying so far so good. Okay, great. Okay. Thanks for bearing with me, folks. Let's go ahead and so over here, pull this back up. Now, right there, you see the wingtip. We've got a line through there. We bent it up. Here's a crucial thing not to do. When you go to do the other side of this wing, you've got this wing in here. Don't fold this wing up until you've got it in the fuselage, right? If you bend it like this and glue it, you know, you've glued it in and you do it on this end, you won't slide it in that fuselage without a pretty good risk of breaking it. Also, notice my pencil. I'm trying to show you that I just so I'll glide it back and down before I break it. I haven't taken off the rubber band on this one yet. This will get replaced with a bigger rubber band when I'm done. And that's what the finished airplane looks like. If you're going to do this in a class, I suggest these winders, if you go out and put a much bigger rubber band on there, these winders will really help you wind it out. You can use them in the Science Olympiad and different things for there. That's a 15 to 1. What that means is turn that winder once, it's going to turn the propeller or run that rubber band motor up 15 times. So really quickly you can get to three or 400 winds. By doing those things, by doing those things, you are going to get a flight that was maybe two and a half seconds to a five second or six second flight with these. And it really is dramatic and the kids get fired up. And one thing I, the kids will tend to say, they'll say, I have a stunt plane. No, you have a plane that doesn't fly well. What we want to see are big, long, graceful circles. And it's really very exciting. If you want some experiments with it, use wider or thinner rubber bands. Also, if you want to plot it, it's another interesting thing you do with rubber model airplanes is, if you would weigh out the rubber motors, give every kid, every child the same weight of motors, and then take a couple and wind them till they break. That's right, take one, take it out, wind it till it breaks. You stretch it, you wind it, you wind it, you wind it, wind it, wind it, then it snaps. And, you, and if you've got some time, you do several of those. Well, you'll find out what the, you know, the wind limit is. So say it's 200 winds. You can have the kids wind it to 100, watch the airplane fly, fly wind it to 150, and then 175. And what you're going to see is more than that, just that 175, it flies longer. Most of the thrust comes in the final 20%. So that's a real good tip for the Science Olympiad. If you've got a high gym ceiling, you can put a lot of thrust into it. If you don't, you may not want to do that. And um, another way to balance the thrust is you go wider, narrow rubber bands. Wider tend to have more thrust. Narrow tends to have a longer duration. So you really could spend weeks on just messing with rubber motors on these planes. I don't think really any of us have the time, but I'm throwing that out for anybody that's in the Science Olympiad or just doing any kind of airplane competition. So we've got the airplane. 
So that's a really nice breakup, especially if you, the kids have been doing uh, virtual flying for about a week or so. It's a great way to kind of break it up. If you're not going to go any farther, you've hit the stability of airplanes, which is great. You've talked about stability. You've talked about the four forces of airplane. Good to go. Now, if you've got more time and you want to go into greater depth, that's where we go with this next. We're going to go into Construction Maker, and what we're going to do is we're going to end up building some planes. And we do that by first getting in a van RV-10 and saving it, and then renaming it their name, DA for dihedral angle, 00, zero name DA dihedral angle 20 degrees, or 20. And we're going to go in the airplane in Plane Maker and modify it. Now, folks, I can't say it uh, <clears throat> enough that when you go ahead to do this, that they save these airplanes and you keep the preserve the RV-10. Because that way, you that's our mule. That's the one we use basically every time we do this. Okay? So you're going to go in, and let me just show you what the plane's going to look like when you're going to get done. All right, so there's one with no dihedral angle. There's one with a 20 degree dihedral angle. What you'll find there is, there it is, there's that 23 degree angle. What you're trying to do at that point is you're then going to fly the airplane, you're going to put it to bank 30 degrees, and you're going to see how long it returns back to level flight. What you've got to remember there on level flight it will take, the idea is hopefully that when it's being in a dihedral, it will allow it to return back to level. It'll correct for that, where the flat wing doesn't as nearly as much. And the way dihedral works is, whichever, you put dihedral into a wing, so the wing that drops because of the shape actually increases in lift. And the wing that's high actually decreases in lift. So therefore, the wing that was decreasing, that was dropping, is now getting more lift. It raises up, and the wing that was up high is now falling down. So it corrects back and forth. It's a, ne a classic negative feedback loop. And it dampens the effects of the atmosphere on the pilot. Say they're running through turbulent air. It's a perfect example of that. There's also, um, but there's trade-offs into this. Okay? Wait a minute, let me didn't bump this wrong key there. There's trade-offs. Which of these two planes do you think will handle quicker? And now are the kinds of the questions we get to the kids. Um, we ask them, and I'm going right here in my teacher notes on this. We ask the kids, our class, you know, they go out and fly it. And what they find out is we ask them, well, which one would be easier to fly and why? Which plane would be more maneuverable? Which plane were you more likely to see more or less dihedral in a fight, you know, in a fighter aircraft or a general aviation aircraft? Heck, modern aircraft today will have negative dihedral to make them so they're even more maneuverable, but they also then require a computer to keep them from breaking up in midair. Okay, so let me give you a, we'll go through it real quick here. I'm going to jump out of this. We'll get into X uh, Plane Maker, and I'll show you how we change that. So we jump on in the Plane Maker as we pull this up. Give me a second, it'll pop up. Here we go. Pops it right up there. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. And let me just show you real. There it is in the dihedral angle again, right there. Okay. But let's see how I went about doing that. I'm going to open it back up. So what I would do if I was... Change this down. I'm going to say don't save. All right. I would go into Van RVs, General Aviation.
Let's try that again. Oh boy, don't save. All right, let's go. General aviation. Why in the world is my aircraft doing this? We're just having a, quite the day today, aren't we? Let me get it back out and start it back up again. Let's try that again. All right, there's an RV-10. You see it right there. There's an RV-10. I'm going to go File, Save As. I'm going to call this, and you can see it. It would be Tom Dubik 00. You can see right in Tom Dubik 20. DA, I'm going to do another one, TD, I'm just going to use my T Dubic. Okay, and then I'm going to say DA, and I'll make this 20 degrees again so I can show you what, how we changed it. Click save. All right, then I go into, I look on the handout. You're going to have it right in the sheet. It'll be in a menu. In this case, what page is it? Page 36, there's a menu choice. It has the plane. It says, hey, we need wing one dihedral. So we're going to go wing one. And we're going to change the dihedral to zero. And you can see it's changing right there. Take a look at that. Since we changed the dihedral, wing two, which is the wing tips, are out of the joint. So we're going to go to wing two. All right. We're going to set that dihedral. We don't want the wing tips having a dihedral either for that matter. So we're making that zero. And then we're still, wing tips are up too high. So we're going to go to wing two vertical arm. That's this right here. And you know, the kids could play with this. If you don't want to, you don't have to necessarily show them number. They can adjust it up and down. But for expedience sake, it's 1.25. Also, it's a good math question if you ever wanted to have them calculate it, what that number's be. So there we go. There's our plane. I'm doing that with the space bar. All right. Now I go ahead and get out. I file. Quit. If I did it, if I hit file quit, I could then fly this airplane. So we'll go ahead and quit. You want to save change? Yeah, save. And if I go into X plane, then I can fly it. But for expedience sake, we'll just jump on to the next lesson here.